Good day, everyone. Hilo Masoy here, sports reporter for the Manila Times, and welcome to another edition of No Holds Barred. Today's episode, we talk with Gilas Philippines women's point guard Ella Fajardo as she shared her experiences 2021 FIBA Women's Asia Cup as well as her thoughts on her upcoming season for Lady Dickinson University Knights, the USNCA. That said, please check this interview out. Uh, yep, Ella, about your Gales 5 on 5 debut, of course, you finally joined the seniors team. Um, the 5 on 5 seniors team, of course, you played before in Drake Street, right? So, right. how was it, you know, the whole experience, the bubble training, and then the whole competition itself? Can you please describe the feeling for just the whole experience? Uh, the experience as a whole, whole, looking back, was just so exciting. I remember having feelings. I had a lot of feelings. I had excitement. Uh, there was obviously that um, pressured feeling really from all of us, coach, the coaches, the players. Um, at times, I'd feel a little sad because I was away from family. Uh, I knew that my teammates here at Fairleigh Dickinson University, they'd be working out every single day. You know, the same thing that I was basically doing at Gilas. Um, so I had a lot of mixed emotions, but at the end of the day, I was always so grateful to have the privilege of, of you know, playing basketball in the Philippines, especially because I know that you guys haven't been playing for two years almost, like college basketball, no college basketball, um, you know, the courts would be closed and all that. I know it's super serious over there. And there I was playing basketball in the Philippines with uh, the best of the best, the, the best of the best players in the Philippines. And I was a part of that. So, um, yeah, it was definitely mixed emotions, but I was really excited and grateful for the most part. Yep. Um, and I know you pretty much killed it in your high school basketball career, you know. I know you really done well. But how does it feel playing up against these experienced players in the international scene? Basically players, you know, who have just come from the Olympics and then um, basically taller, older than you. How does mm-hmm. it feel going up against it? Um, I feel like before I was called up to go, I mean, just when I was called up to go and I found out that I was playing with the women, that's when I was like, whoa, these are, you know, women with kids, women yeah. who, who has been playing the game of basketball for so long, some WNBA players. Um, and like you said, teams that just came from the Olympics but I feel like as the days got um, closer and closer to us competing I really had no time to think about that because it doesn't really make a difference I mean uh, yeah I could say I'm 18 playing again it's, um, 20 but my team it's 29 years old but at the end of the day it's your performance and how you perform for your team so couldn't really think about that or stress over it much because once you're on the court it's even playing field yeah uh, by the way, since you were a rookie, are there any were there any rookie initiations? Oh, Something any like? rookie? Um, I don't think so. Uh, for the most part, we weren't even allowed to like go into each other's rooms, especially during in the bubble, our bubble phases, uh, um, where there'd be there'd also be the Philippine national women's volleyball and the men's. They were also there. So we really tried to keep inside our rooms as much as possible. So maybe next time. <laughs> uh, by the way, who, who are your favorite teammates there? Or is uh, players you really bonded with during? Um, I just want to say overall, I think I had a different relationship with each and every one of my teammates because not only would they talk to me like after games and before games about the game itself but you know, they'd ask me how my family was they would ask about my experience here in the u.s and that's what i really love about filipino people like they're very genuine and you know they really really care for you i could i can't really say that i have any favorites but at the top of my head i can think of at the andrea tonko she would always make me laugh like she'll she she's like she's she's one of our smallest guards but she she's like she can make anyone laugh and um at the claire who's like quite the opposite she's the tallest on the team so funny her laugh just like makes everybody laugh um and you know obviously the other rookies me camille christine Kayabia, carl anfingol uh we bonded in 
different ways because you know we we did three on three together and now we're on the the women's team so we're all on the same boat we have we all have felt the same feelings so yeah <laughs> those are just a couple yeah so we've known what happened with uh china australia and what was the other one chinese taipei and but i like to talk about the our win uh over india that was a very important since if we didn't we would have been relegated to division b right so yeah do you please talk about that how you know, what was the mindset of you guys going there and just mm-hmm. the whole game because for the most part i believe india was ahead right yes they were ahead actually and we were just behind them until like the fourth quarter when we finally pulled through and sustained the lead but our mentality going into that game was definitely to win i mean that's our mentality for each and every game but it's a different feeling when you know that's the last game that you're gonna play and especially for the veterans they were saying that it was so so incredibly difficult and such a long process to get into division a itself so if it was if there was anyone who really understood the weight of you know winning or losing it was coach pat coaches and our veteran players so um it, it was just a win mentality all the way it helped that coach pat was in a more positive mood even though we were losing majority of the time but that kind of helped motivate us to keep going, to keep having a positive uh, mindset, I guess you could say, and just to pull out with a win at the end. Um, I'd love to talk about the veterans, you say, because these veterans, you know, Janine Pontejos, um, April Bernardino, these are practically what I wanted to label as the present of Philippine basketball. Um, how, how is it teaming up with them finally? Basically, these are the phases of the Philippine basketball um, in the present. Right. I I really love them on and off the court. On the court, I really appreciated and respected their presence. And I found it really helpful that every time that there was some kind of break, they would always talk to me like, Ella, do you know the plays? How are you feeling about the plays? Um, you know, just always giving me tips and advice. So that, you know, those times where I'd forget to reach out to them, they'd always be there for me regardless. Mm-hmm. Now, since we've talked about the present, people always love to talk about the future. So, and one of the players they see as the future of Gilas is you and perhaps other players too. But mm-hmm. how, um, what are your thoughts on that? Basically, the fans seeing you as the future of Philippine basketball, at least, you know, when it comes to the point guard position, it's pr- probably one of the most imp- or the most important position because, as they say, it's the extension of the coach in the basketball court, right? So, how do you see that? Um, what are your thoughts on that? That again, people seeing us, yes, uh, this is our girl in in the future for more years to come. When it comes to the point guard position, right? Um, it always puts a smile on my face to see comments like that or people yeah. repost you know stuff of us sometimes like stuff of me because uh, it, it just it, it makes me feel like my heart is taking off and that um even though i didn't have a huge huge let's say i guess playing time on the court people still recognize that whenever i was on i would give it my all and that's kind of not it's not necessarily something that i ask for or like look for but when I see it, it's like, oh, like they realize that, you know, or they, they <laughs> I don't want to say they think I'm good enough, but it's just reassuring to know that the people that you're playing and fighting for, like love seeing you on the court and want you to be on the court more in the future, or they just want to see you in the future in general. So that was really like, a, I, I definitely just felt the love and support and I really, really do appreciate it. Um, any lessons you pick up, maybe you, um, basketball lessons, the X and O's that you may use in college basketball from this year's experience? Not really X and O's, maybe just the mentality, yeah. the attitude. Um, from my past experience 
playing for the FIBA Asia Women's Cup, I definitely learned how to compose myself more on the court. I felt like after each game, I felt less and less nervous on the court. Uh, when we were playing against China first, of course, um, I was still running the plays, but um, I guess I feel like I still lacked a sense of purpose in where I was moving, where I wanted to, the ball to go. But as the games progressed and I kept playing more, I felt like I knew I knew exactly where, where I wanted to go. I knew exactly where to take my shots, how to play defense the way I want to play defense. So definitely confidence, composure, uh, and just, yeah, overall, I think confidence in myself, like bringing down the ball, being able to feed it to my teammates when they needed it, and just being able to do it as well. So, yeah, um, talk about your Gilas, Gilas experience. Now we move on to your um, upcoming rookie season right, in uh, FDU. When is the season going to start, by the way? Well, we have, a, we have two more scrimmages, and then our first game is... Right here, <laughs> our first game is November 10th. Oh, at St. Less than so, a month, maybe three weeks. Yeah, right? three weeks. yeah, next week we have a, a scrimmage, and then the week after that, we have another scrimmage, and then it's game time. And we'll just have yeah. keep having back to back games. You guys are at the Northeast Conference, right? Yes, exactly. So, by the way, why I know there are a lot of schools that tried to recruit you, even NU, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, why cho- why did you chose FDU, by the way? And yeah, wh- why FDU? Mm-hmm. I chose FDU because, well, I grew up playing basketball here, and um, a lot, a lot of athletes who play basketball can say that they've been on. Um, AU or it's called travel teams where we travel to Kentucky, Chicago, just to be scouted by coaches who like really, really go to the venue from across the country to watch you play and to see if they want you on their team. And uh, to be a Division One athlete is free scholarship, free you know free dorming, free education. So that's really that's the goal for so 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 many athletes and. I think it's like 1.6 or 1.2 only play Division One basketball from high school. So I mean that that's st- st- statistic alone tells yeah. you that um, it's only a selected few that they really recruit for Division One basketball, and also the level of competition, the level in, of intensity that you're gonna have every single game is really unmatched for your four years in college. So, yes, a lot of schools in the Philippines were recruiting me and I was looking into it. But, you know, when you have that kind of opportunity here in the United States, it's you can't turn it down. That's already quite an accomplishment, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, players out here are actually dreaming about playing there, playing in the right, US right. Division One. So, yeah, you have something great in your hands, uh, by the way. Um, How's the team, by the way, the the whole Knights team, your teammates, coaches, how is it so far? They're doing good. We actually had a scrimmage today just against ourselves, like there was a blue and white team. Um, and you could definitely see that we're picking up the plays quicker. We're learning about like our roles on the team. Um, yeah, I just feel like it's really coming together and we're just really excited for the actual season to start because we really believe in um, our abilities and the people that we have this year. Um, any goals for your rookie season? I'd say our team goal is really to win our conference and you know be able to go to March Madness. That's like the yeah. ultimate, ultimate goal. Individually, I just want to be able to contribute to my team as much as I can. Doesn't necessarily have to be scoring a lot, a lot of points every game if I could give off energy. Um, through my defense or, you know, just be a threat and have a presence on the court. That's really what I want to do. How about, uh, like, is there a facet in your game like you really want to improve this year? Like, just for example, oh, I want to improve my uh, shooting or my uh, dribbling and anything like that. Any facet of your game that you really want to? 
I think my coach, uh, my coach for me, or you know, just me transitioning into college basketball, I really want to improve my decision making because my coach assures me all the time. She's like, "You can shoot, Ella. You can drive if you want to. Like you, you, you're versatile on the court. Basically, it's kind of just my decision making. Like, if I drive, is the shot really open, or do you want to pass it to to your two man who's who who has the highest percentage shot on the team, or would you rather like do a floater on like the biggest person on the court? Like sometimes I will take that floater, and then my coach pulls me and she says, "Hey, a better option is to kick it out instead." So just just little things like that. Um, I think it comes with maturity, but that's something that I'm really pushing for, even just as a rookie, so that uh, um, I guess my coach can just see that I can be used <laughs> more. What are the chances that you and Vanessa De Jesus will chat? I know you're in different conferences, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, you need her? to to make the March Madness. Is that right? We just have to try and make March Madness, and then if we just keep on advancing, you never know. <laughs> you, we might cross cross paths. Yeah, that will be really great. I mean, a lot of Filipino fans will really tune into it. So oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, um. Now that we talk about your um, goals for the season, how about the ultimate, the the dream? Is it WNBA? What what is it? Um, I have gotten that question quite a few times, and as much as I really want to think about the future like that, I I feel like I'm I'm trying to so, to to write down and trying to. To achieve little goals at a time, especially especially just my time here in college, I really want to enjoy every single moment and try to uh, just absorb everything that my coach is saying. Because one of my dreams is also to go back to the Philippines. I don't know if to like live there or something like that, but to go back and to try and really promote uh, girls' youth basketball, like uh, girls who'd want to play basketball in their futures, because. In the Philippines, I feel like parents are not really like inclined to put their kids into sports in general, uh, especially for girls, because it's not enough like revenue to, uh, I guess, for them to live off of. Like they they won't be able to just play basketball and be okay in life. Like they like they'd have to have extra jobs, unlike the men's team. And I I just know that there's so much potential. And we just need more support and more role models for the little kids so that they could keep going. Yeah, actually, um, you playing in the USNCA Division One that actually ultimately will help the the parents fielding in their daughters to play basketball sports in general. Because you know you need to see someone out there that doing something really good. For, for them to emulate, right? It's just like, you know, Heidi and Diaz, right? Uh, yeah. Our Olympic gold medalist. No one really cared, to be honest. No one really cared about weightlifting before. And then she won silver in the 2016, then gold in the Asian Games, and then gold in the Southeast Asian Games, and then another gold in the Olympics. That's where the, you know, the fans were starting. Oh, what 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 is this week? How about um, Gilas? Um, is it always a go? As long as there's no season, right? College. What are you? What is your commitment? Um, just as long as it doesn't conflict with my season, uh, I would most definitely, without a doubt, play with them. Hopefully, hopefully in the summer, I, I'm really hoping that they have something that's going on so that I could go back and play for my country because it really is a different feeling. Um, than playing anywhere else. And I gained so much experience, confidence, um, or go, then going back here, I get so much experience and confidence from that. I feel like it really levels up my game. I think we have a Southeast Asian Games. Is that part of um, When did you say? Uh, Southeast Asian Games in May 2020. Is that um, feasible for you? Um, it does, it does look May. May would, I think, maybe if I'm done with school. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, there's also school. 
Study first, of course. Um, but anyway, uh, I actually don't have much questions. Um, so I'll just uh, let you maybe uh, let you thank someone, any acknowledgements, message to uh, Filipino Hoops fans, especially to the, the youngers out there, you know, who are really looking up to you. I know you really have a lot of fans out here. Thank you. Um, so first, I'd just like to shout out my parents because without their support, without them pushing me to, you know, continue to play what I love and continue to uh, drive me to 10 hour tournaments, uh, all that gas money, sometimes plane money, you know, it's, it's a huge sacrifice. And I know that a lot, a lot of kids can relate to that in the Philippines, uh, in, in, the, in America. Um, so we'll, by the grace of God, thank you that I was able to pull through, that I was able to play Division One basketball here. Um, and their, their support is just so un unconditional. And I just know that if more parents had that kind of support for their kids in the Philippines to play uh, basketball, especially for little girls, there, our, our level would be like insane because <laughs> because it starts from when you're younger uh, I know that a lot of players actually on the Gila's team started really late with basketball like at the Afril before she played basketball she was she competed for high jump like that's why she's so athletic but imagine if you know she started way younger and her parents pushed her to you know pursue basketball it would be oh, I don't even know what's better than that at the Afril right <laughs> um but sometimes that's the case for Filipino women, tall Filipino women. They'll be like, oh, you're tall, go play basketball. But, um, you know, when you start them young, it's a different uh, different scenario. And for everyone who supported us, thank you so much. It's been amazing to see how much the support system has grown since two years ago when I played FIBA Asia Cup U18. We definitely had a lot of support then, but this competition was like insane. Uh, I don't know if it's because it was five on five Gilas, right? Like it's it's obviously going to going to be different, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, little girls even messaging me after the game, like, oh, I hope to play with you someday, and that just melts my heart because uh, when like let's say here, and I'm practicing every day and practicing it every day, there are always those days where I'm like, oh, I have to get up so early and all that, or. Uh, oh, my schedule's so packed. It's so hard for me to bounce homework and school. But then you're reminded of those kids who message you, who look up to you. And it's like, you know, it's, it's it doesn't become that, that bad after all. And you remember your purpose, your bigger purpose. So it, you guys really motivate me, those who reach out to me and those who like, even if it's just a repost of our game or something like that, it really brings a lot of happiness and motivation into my life. So thank you. There you go. Ella Fajardo of Gilas Philippines Women's Team and the Fair Lady Concern University Knights. See you again next time here, the host bard of the Manila Times Sports. Yes.